So this is from one of my favorite open salon authors called Steve Katz. He's my favorite little bubble. And the name of the story is Shirley Doesn't Steal. Since I'm doing all this with one hand, please have mercy on me. The name of the story, as I said, was Shirley Doesn't Steal, all about Shirley Seidelman. Do you know have do you know you have a twenty five dollar gift certificate hanging over the toilet in your bathroom? Betty asked. Why haven't I seen that before? So how much time do you spend in my bathroom? Shirley replied as she dunked the tea bag into two cups of water. Do you want cookies? I've got some nice cookies. Ignoring the question about the cookies, Betty went on. Well, if I had a twenty-five dollar gift certificate, I could think of better things to do with it. No, said Shirley wistfully. I like it just where it is. One day last year, Shirley and her friend Natalie had spent the day shopping in Manhattan. That was some bargain you got, Shirley said as they descended the escalator. You look so cute in that little red beret, and for six bucks, how could you go wrong? Yes, Natalie replied, just call me the red lady. I'm a sucker for anything. Red. They were just about to leave the last door on their list, Alexander's Department Store, where you always come first, on 59th Street and 3rd Avenue. Just a minute, honey, Shirley yelled. I have too many little bags here. If we have to fight the crowds on the F train, I know I'll lose something before we get back to Fresh Meadows. Shirley stopped at a glass display case by the front door and placed all her packages on the jewelry counter. She took each garment out of its bag, carefully folded it, and placed it on the counter. When everything had been accounted for, she piled her purchases into one big Alexander's bag. There, she said. Now I won't lose anything. Let's go home. My feet are killing me. Shirley and Natalie had just walked through the first set of doors when all hell broke loose. A woman in a uniform grabbed her shopping bag while two large men took Shirley by the arms, lifted her up, and dragged her back into the store. What's going on? Shirley asked. What's going on here? Who are you? The younger uniformed man spoke up. Ma'am, you've been caught with shoplifting. You've been caught shoplifting. You'll have to come to security with us. But I didn't do nothing, Shirley yelled as she was dragged by the two men towards the elevator. It wasn't me. Honest, it wasn't me. Shirley was frightened. Nothing like this had ever happened to her before. What's going on, Natalie asked frantically. Where are you taking her? Uh, Ma'am, the, rep- the woman replied sternly, just keep on walking. If you don't walk away, we will also arrest you as accomplice. Natalie backed away as she watched her friend get into the elevator. After having her picture taken, Shirley was seated in a small room with one large, glass, large, lar- one large wall of glass. Through the window, she could see her shopping bag sitting on a table. When am I going to get out of here? Shirley asked the officer who was sitting with her. He avoided her gaze as, he had, as she devoured a bag of Cheetos. I ain't done nothing wrong. You'll get out of here when we say so, he snapped. The security manager is out of the building. As soon as he returns, he will deal with you. Now the magnitude of what happened finally hit Shirley. By now, she should have been home in Fresh Meadows with her feet on the ottoman watching Oprah. Instead, she was locked in a room with a shopping Nazi, like some common criminal. Uncharacteristically, she began to cry. After 30 more minutes, the door opened. Mrs. Finkelstein, I'm Mr. Peckler. I'm in charge of Alexander's security. He sounded very official. No, not official. Pompous. I understand you've been doing a little shoplifting today. Shirley looked at Peckler. He was a little man who possessed beady eyes and a cheap suit. His cuffs didn't quite reach his shoes. Suddenly, Shirley didn't see the situation as Alexander's Miss Shirley, Finkelstein. It was Finkelstein, Miss Peckler! She was no longer frightened. She was angry. Well, let's just see here. He reached inside the bag and threw each item on the desk. I don't suppose you have receipts for any of these items. As a matter of fact, I do, Shirley said smugly. Hand me my purse. Shirley reached in and pulled out a handful of store receipts. I always save the receipts when I shop at Alexander's. Your merchandise is so shoddy, I often have to return things. Mr. Peckler made a sour face. This was not the sort of answer he expected from a shoplifter. Tears, pleading, repentance, offers of compensation were all part of his day. But he quickly realized that Shirley was different, a different kettle of fish. Here you go, Mr. Peckler, Shirley said defiantly, handing over the receipts. Knock yourself out. Match them up with my purchases. Methodically, Peckler laid the the papers over each garment. Surprisingly, each item had a proper receipt. Hmm, Mr. Peckler stammered. Seems like everything is in order after all. You're damn right, you little shit, Shirley yelled. Now let me the fuck out of here. Alexander's is so sorry for the inconvenience, Peckler mumbled. So sorry. You see, our research has sold that 98% of the people we bring in here have stolen something from Alexander's. And yes, said Shirley, squinting at the little man. Well, you just met one of the 2%, and you ain't heard the end of this. She threw her purchases into the Alexander bag. First, I want my picture back. Mr. Peckler fumbled with some papers and quickly handed the mugshot back to Shirley. 
Now Alexander's sending me home in a miss nice cab, Mr. Peckler. She emphasized the P in Peckler. I ain't going to miss my dinner on account of you. Of course, Mrs. Finkelstein, of course. And have a pleasant evening. Thank you. I love this. Sh I love this, Steve. I love Shirley.